Hey there. A couple of weeks ago, I did an art review of Faber-Castell watercolor markers. So I thought it'd be super cool today to do a demo for you to show you how I'd actually use them to do something like uh, a mixed media face. Uh, so first of all, because these are watercolor markers, and I do highly love them and recommend them, you can uh, check the eye in the corner of the screen You can, if you wanna watch the full review. Um, if I was going to only use water to activate these, just water, which you can, I would only use um, my favorite watercolor brushes, which are these ones by Polina Bright. However, when you're doing mixed media, and you're working with any water soluble material, so anything that you can activate or that transforms into watercolor when you, when you add water, and there's a lot of art supplies that fall into that category, um, you don't have to just use water to activate them. You can actually use any kind of liquid. So changing the liquids that you use to activate them can really transform your project. So, I haven't done the project yet, so I don't know what I'm gonna be using, but I just wanted to give you a heads up about brushes, substrates, and the different liquids that you can use. So sometimes when I'm working with water-soluble materials, that could be pencils, it could be, um, there's water-reactive crayons, markers, so many things, <laughs> so many things. Um, sometimes I will use gesso to activate them. Gesso is wet. Again, you can use any material that's wet. The reason, if you see me using gesso, is that it will, helps to smooth out. So a lot of these materials, especially the crayons, um, really the pencils and the markers, they leave behind, uh, they leave behind like the original streak mark of the tool that you're using. So using gesso helps to kind of hide that original mark um, and helps blend things a bit better. So you could use clear gesso. You won't see me using clear gesso. I don't like, it's like grainy. I don't like the texture of it very much, but you will often see me using the gesso and that's why I'm doing that. Gesso is also not totally opaque, still has a little translucency, so it won't um, it won't totally obscure your marker marks, but it will lighten them a bunch. Alternatively, you could also use something like matte medium to activate your watercolor markers. Matte medium uh, actually dries clear, so you're, you're keeping more of the vibrancy and more of the original color. It also is kind of cool because it freezes your art supply. And what does that mean? It means if I was just using water throughout this project to activate my markers, the, the reactivity never stops. So you can always, always like activate layers underneath. It will always move. But if you use something like matte medium, because it's also an, and it also is like a glue, it has like adhesive qualities, it will actually work to freeze your under layers so that when you're working on layers on top, the bottom layers won't move. It's a little bit magical. So you can choose, pick and choose different liquids to activate your watercolor markers. So just be aware. Also, if you see me reaching for either the gesso or the matte medium, please note that I will stop using my very precious watercolor markers and I will instead always switch to a cheap, crappy, and also very stiff uh, brush because these other mixed media products are gonna trash your lovely and usually expensive watercolor brushes. So only use these with water. And if you're gonna use any sort of medium to activate any of your water soluble materials, always switch to a stiff bristled brush. That way you're not ruining your good brushes. This one is um, actually made by Creative Mark. It's a masking fluid brush, but it's because it's stiff, it's also cheap as anything. You can buy like a dozen for very inexpensive fully amount of money. <laughs> and um, I don't need to worry about trashing my brushes. So I have already, uh, I've already drawn out our figure for today and I'm gonna to be using these watercolor markers that I've already reviewed 
to make a project and I hope you enjoy. Oh, last thing I'm working on hot pressed watercolor paper. You can use absolutely any watercolor paper. Um, you can also use any art journal paper. Just make sure that you're gessoing your pages first if you're using any sort of paper that's not specifically meant to handle wet media. You can also use absorbent ground, uh, which is actually made specifically for water uh, watercolors, but either of them will work. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I already have the face drawn out. This is my reference for her. I think she's absolutely stunning. Um, but I want to add a lot of color to this because I have these all these vibrant markers. So I'm going to do some colors for her hair. Um, but yeah, I just had to draw her. So she's all out here. I'm working on hot press. You can do either hot press or cold press. This just is nice and smooth. So it's great for drawing. I have a whole video on different kind of papers that you can use. Um, I'm going to be using this. Let's see. This is beige red. I always test my art supplies on like a piece of scrap just before I get started. Now the cool thing, <laughs> the crazy thing about watercolor markers, oh great, it's dragging, awesome. <laughs> I'm being facetious, it's gross. <laughs> dragging my, um, what's it called? Graphite, which I don't like. So, um, so I'm gonna be putting this down in the areas that's darker. So I'm looking at my reference photo here and I'm like, where is it the darkest? And that is where I'm going to like straight up put the marker. Okay. I mean, and this, the shot, this is like black. So we'll get there, but we're just gonna lay down kind of a first layer. She has some really pretty soft eyeshadow areas and then also just shadow areas here and here. So I'm really closely following my reference to get started. And here and here and here. So if you notice, I'm not like coloring in her whole face. I'm just kind of hitting the parts that I see that are darker. This is whole side over here, it's all really dark. And then again, like under here is literally black, but I'm just gonna start with this as a first coat. Whoop, be good if you, you know, could color in the lines. All right, and then honestly, I just see what happens. We can start with water and then I usually end up adding, like I was saying in the intro, I usually end up adding, um, oh, where are my other brushes? Some other mediums because the water, as you'll see, isn't generally quite enough to get things like moving and shaking, just depends. So I have a pretty thick layer of the marker down. Also, because these are markers and these are not watercolors, like from a pan or a set, you do, remember I was also saying this in the intro, you, you still always kind of see the original lines, which you know can be kind of undesirable to be honest. So using things like gesso and matte medium can help mitigate some of that. But as in all mixed media projects, it's kind of a big experiment. It's not, you know, it's art. It's a little free flowing and sometimes things work out really well. Sometimes things go really badly. And um, the most important thing is to just not freak out and just keep going because you know, she's gonna, if you let the ugly phase win and there always is one, then like you've accomplished nothing. So you have to just work through all this stuff and it's all normal and it's all good. So just chill and try to uh, enjoy the process. 
So as you can see, there's like, oh, look at that. Look at that fun little extra line outside. <laughs> so um, the downside of markers is they do leave kind of a, they do leave like a streaky, like you always have the residue from the layers and it's never kind of quite right. And this is why I always usually end up adding a little gesso or something. So that's still wet. I'm not even gonna wait for it to dry. And I'm gonna add a little, this is just a big, big thing of gesso here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit. Gesso, I've missed you. I have not like whipped up a proper mixed media project in what feels like forever. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on a plate right here and I'm gonna go in with that brush that I was showing you. Um, and I'm just gonna smooth. This is just straight gesso. There's nothing, I didn't add anything else. My paper, I have like turned my camera off. This is all just in real time that you're watching this. So I haven't dried anything. But this helps just kind of smooth things over. Now, another thing, if you're new to mixed media, is that pretty much never are you going to get a result that you want with one layer. <laughs> That's just the name of the game. So um, helps to know that, to not get stressed out. Like, just know it going in. Like there'll be one, <laughs> sometimes it's like 12 layers. Now, when I started with art, I'm, I'm like a super impatient person just by nature. I'm like a little bit like an eight year old. I like things to be fast. My friends make super fun of me cause I'm always like, oh, really annoyed if something's not done on the first pass. <laughs> so if I can sit through a few layers, you certainly can too, because really it's really, it's really worth it is the, is the bottom line here. Um, I also love working with watercolor markers because they can kind of take the rigors of mixed media. Some markers cannot. They are not friendly. They are just too fragile and they'll kind of poop out on you. But watercolor markers actually can, can put up with quite a, quite a lot. So that's why I enjoy working with them so much. Now, mix, hot press paper, which is what this is, it is not as sturdy as cold press. So I have to be a little bit careful. Cold press is like canvas. You can really do whatever you want to it and it can survive. Hot press, you have to baby a little tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do, since this is all wet, I'm not gonna do a second layer yet until this is dry because I don't want to get the wet gesso like embedded onto my marker. It will ruin my marker. So I'm going to turn my camera off and I'm going to dry this and then we'll do the second layer. All right, so now this is almost totally dry. I, I could wait some more, but I'm not gonna. Um, okay, and then we need to do layer two. Now I'm going to kind of go back to the places that I did before. Okay, so the places that are really dark. Again, I'm working from a reference photo. I am not like coming up with this out of the clear blue sky. Um, and again, some of these darks really can be way, 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 way darker than I have them. But it's, it's nice to kind of build up a little bit more slowly than get super aggressive about it. So I'm just going over the same exact areas that I did before. And again, I don't have to, I don't have to color in all the parts because the water is what kind of spreads it around. So we can do the same thing. We can start off with, um, we can start off with water if we want to. I'm going to just for shits and giggles, I'm going to switch to matte medium which will help lock down the layers. So I'm using another crappy brush because I do not want to ruin my lovely watercolor brushes. So again, to reiterate what I was saying in my intro was that, oh, you know what? I don't know what bottle to switch. I have both on my plate and they look identical and I think this is the matte medium. So again, we can kind of activate this but this time there's no, there's no color when it dries. So it's not as like milky white. 
I think I'm in, I think I'm using the laminating pile on my plate. I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> my plate looks like this. So as you can see, <laughs> they look identical. <laughs> and I wasn't paying attention. All right, so I have to be careful because again, this is not cold press. So it's like um, hot press cannot take the beating that cold press can. This is like a big, stupid, fluffy brush that I hate, which is why I'm using it. But it, it like lacks precision because it just has like a big fluffy end. So that's pretty funny. Okay. Come on, smoosh out. Okay. So this time it didn't, it wasn't like, it didn't get as lightened because I wasn't using the gesso. So you get kind of an idea. So again, you have, you don't get this like seamless blending that you do like you good with that, like you would with watercolors because it's not watercolors, it's just the markers. So let's add some super, I wanna do some super vibrant hair. Um, let me see what colors we have. Maybe some different blues. Really should have picked my, all right, I'm gonna go pick some colors. And I'm also gonna dry her skin one more time. All right, we have some super cool colors. So this is like a, gray so these markers in case you missed the review have like a bullet nib oh that's better they have a bullet nib and then they have a brush nib at the other end so you can use them accordingly so i'm using the little bullet nib to add in her eyebrows And then I have picked out these three shades of blue. So the lightest shade, oh hell yeah. Where's my reference photo? I got blown away by my hair dryer. See how her hair is super windswept? I was like, yes, please. We're doing that all day long. So say there's like a There'll be like a highlighted region in here. So I will keep that. This can go. Whee! So fun. You must try this at some point in your life. And um, to make this go really fast, I'm using the wicked side of my brush. And then she's got these like little stray flyaway things over here. And go right off the paper. That looks dumb. Okay. Now we're going to do the second darkest. And we are going to go kind of keep it a little bit smaller regions. If you follow my Karen Campbell Draws YouTube channel, I do a lot with markers, alcohol markers on my other channel. And this is very similar to that, just without the water. This actually can come all the way. I'm not sure why I'm skirting away from her ear. Gonna do this, that, and then the darkest one, we're gonna do right at the root only. This is the same color as her. I browse and kind of do this. And just... All right, so now, oh my gosh, now's the party. I'm gonna use uh, this mop brush and I'm gonna use just water and see what happens. So just water to and get this all flowing. Oh my 
my gosh. It's like heaven. Now, if you wanted to keep this like really highlighted in here, I'm actually just gonna take my paper towel roll and like stamp it in the center. Cause you can keep this part highlighted for a reason. So it looks like there's like a, you know, a highlighted part. <laughs> I don't know how to say that any better. But yeah, just doing the water is so satisfying. We're just blending all these swirly tones together. Woo! And you can come outside of that. And come down here. Just swoopies. So yeah, they're so fun. They're crazy fun. Get your background in in like two minutes. If that is too, you don't like that, you can just, you know, swirl them back again. If you want to take her eyebrows and smooth them out, you can just run some water over them. And that will do the trick as well. But again, the key, so much in mixed media is doing layers. I'm going to give her eyes this same really dark color. And also, don't forget, you don't have to activate anything with water either. You can leave it alone and do a dry drawing with these markers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to you don't have to. You can, but you really don't have to if you don't want to. Now let's do like a nice, I'm gonna do like a nice bright lip. And again, if you want to, like I'm gonna do the top lip dark, but then I'm not even gonna color in the bottom lip. And I'm just gonna use my water spread that down so that the bottom lip is lighter than the top lip. And because it's watercolor, again, if you want to do like a highlight, you can actually lift. <laughs> you can lift and then fix. Lots of lifting and fixing in this project. You can also add the whites afterwards if you're, if you're lifting impaired, like me. <laughs> okay, so there's lots of things that you can do. is always kind of quick and dirty. So her hair is like, a, it's a little bit of a hot mess, but that's like super normal with watercolor markers. It usually takes a couple layers to like really get things going. Let's just pick a random color for her outfit here. <clears throat> Let's see, what do I have? I have, what is that, gray? That seems a little somber. What about green? You can just do a green. It's like a green, generic. <laughs> I don't know what's happening back here. Oh, she's got a hood. Okay, that makes sense. She has a hood. It's the only thing that would make sense to have any part of her shirt so far over. Here we go. And then, yeah, there we go. Hood and then shoulder. We got this. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> exactly what we're doing. Scribble, scrabble away. And then again, so fun. You can just add water to give it like a very painterly look. All right, so I'm gonna dry this. <laughs> Her hood, hilarious. I'm gonna dry this so we can do another coat. All right, now I really wanna start fine tuning this. It looks really like kind of sloppy and yucky. So I'm gonna <clears throat> just do some refining. And again, this is YouTube, so everything's a little bit quick and messy on YouTube. Um, it's just the way we roll. All right, 
If you want my real time, um, kind of not rushed videos, I would highly recommend checking out the Mixed Media Society. That's where, uh, that's where we get serious. YouTube is where we just play and have fun. All right, so I'm just going over and doing another, another layer. This was the medium dark color. Oh my God, I have like the cheesiest song in my head. Celine Dion of all things, what? I love you, Celine, but Wee. let's just go crazy with this hair. Why not? And then we have her little shirt, which is still like, what is happening? I don't know. <laughs> the hood. The hood makes sense of all. See, now I love this look. I love that it's like blendy underneath and then it's like crisp on top, but the same color. That looks very cool. Um, I can definitely, we can definitely get some more shading going. Remember, like in the actual reference photo, look how, this is like black. Like that is black on the value scale. Um, I don't really want to go in with black though, but I can go in with like a dark gray. Is this the same color as her hair? Yeah, this is a little bit of the same color of her hair. So instead of doing that, um, I think what I might do is just do a really dark, dark skin color. Because I do love me. I do love me some contrast. So here is dark skin color here. She also had some here. Here. Again, I'm looking at my reference photo. Oh, yes here and like the shadow around this nostril is definite fierce here and really up the side of this face is as well so this time I am just, just gonna use water so I want to be a little bit more gentle And then I have this extra on my brush so you can use it to move it around. Like she has this blush color on her cheek. So I can, I can do that. We have some actual real darkness on her ear. We also had like her here, here, here. Just running my brush. It's just water. I'm just moving it and spreading it. I'm like adding some up here. If it's too much, then you can just add a little water and kind of dilute it back. Same thing here. It's like it's like a little much, but we can actually add some. There was some shading on this side of her nose, though, so we can bring that up. Bring this down, and then adding water to spread this around. really here and again under here and up here and up there Woo, she is looking fierce all right <clears throat> so I am an outliner so I am going to <clears throat> dry this all with my hair dryer and then I'm gonna go get my Pentel pocket brush pen and outline the heck out of her and get her finished 
up. Again, quick and dirty YouTube style. All right, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Just gonna soften this line with some more water. All right, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, so I definitely have like an outlining. <laughs> I was gonna say fetish might be a strong word, but I just love to outline. So I don't even worry about it, I just do it. So here is this pocket Pentel brush that I absolutely love. Um, it's a bit of an art to use it because it's really sensitive to touch. Um, and you can make really thin lines and you can, oh my gosh, my hair is bonking into all, <laughs> it's bonking into everything. Um, but you can also, you can make great lashes. Now her lashes are actually downward, which is so super cool. So even though her eyes are really dark, there's still a pupil in there. Um, and I wouldn't normally draw the nose bridge, so I'm not going to. But we do need to put in her nostrils. And we can put in a bit of some of the curves so we can just sort of see. You can also then see how bad my shading is. <laughs> um, but it helps to it's just, I just love outlining. I'll just leave it at that. No reason to expound any further. Now in the reference photo, her mouth is actually open. So this is like black inside here. And then there's also some like lip lines that kind of come up here and here. And then same thing with her eyes. over this way and again her lashes kind of come forward it's like so subtle and then her ear is actually quite pronounced oh sorry I was just outlining her um Little chin, chinny chin chin right there. I scroll out, she's looking pretty badass, I have to say. And then you can even take this and kind of be like, oh, there's, <laughs> there's her amazing hood. Look, there's the inside of her hood. Suddenly it's all so clear, not. <laughs> oh. Okay, and then you can take this and even kind of doodle in some stray hair lines that she might have. It's always good to kind of like, you kind of strengthen the main lines of a piece. So you can do this with white too. It doesn't have to be black. But I'm obsessed with this tool. I use it in every single drawing and painting project that I, that I do across all clubs with all my students. Oh, here we go. Look at this. What's happening here? I don't know, but I'm just going with it. Get some stripey stripes. Well, the, what I don't have rocking with her yet is she needs like a little bit of an eye twinkle. Maybe some more eye brow. Accents and more lip lines. Yes, all right, cool. She looks awesome. So let's get some little bit of a, we need to rock some little white highlights for her eyes. And then I think we can call it a day. I'm just gonna Accentuate. Ooh, that was a little bit too much. All right, let me get a white. And I'm going to actually, this is so random, but I'm gonna actually use a whiteout pen. I was just in Ireland 
on vacation. And when I was on, in Ireland, I released, um, I released a video on whites. And someone was like, I use highlighter. And I was like, oh, why don't I? I've never even tried that before. So I'm gonna, I got this highlighting pen. And I'm gonna just try it and see if it works. Boop. I'm gonna do two dots because I'm crazy like that. It's not really working. I can't like press down. I'm terrified to press down. Because that will, oh, maybe I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, I think that does work. We could also do some, no, not really. Oh, there, oh, there we go. It's kind of like, it's a little bit scary sensitive. Like I'm afraid it's gonna explode. Oops, like that, you know, <laughs> like that. As it does, her lips are a mess, but that's okay. It just happens, oh, that just happens sometimes. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. See, but you'd only know if you try. So here we go, Hot Mess Express. No, here's the girl in using the watercolor markers. Um, I actually flip and love how she turned out. I don't love this highlighter, it does not work. So don't use that. Um, but you can use lots of other white products. Like I said, I just did an entire video. <sighs> I don't know how many things I compared, a million. I felt like a million. Um, but you can use all sorts of things. I can do this. See, we can add this back in. This is a white. My husband, of all people, gave this to me for Christmas, and it's kind of the best. It's like Copic, opaque white in like a nail polish bottle. What is this genius? But yeah, I, I kind of love it, actually. So what I was just doing with the black, you can also have fun with doing with white, which is just swooshing. Just make some swooshes, my friends. It's all about the swoosh. But yeah, that is how you use some watercolor markers to make a kick-ass face. And wow, that really did not work at all. That didn't. Can add some cool highlights here. Look at this one. This is all wrong. <laughs> we can add some up here. So many cool places you can add highlights. You can add it here along her cheekbone. Go crazy. <sighs> so yeah, I hope you had a super fun. I hope you'll give this a try. And I will be back next time. Um, I forget what I'm bringing to you next time. I have a schedule, don't even know what it is. But anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you want to watch a super cool video on one of my favorite mixed media girls, go ahead and click the playlist on the end screen and that will lead you right to a whole bunch of them that you can binge. Thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in two weeks in another week or so with another video. Thanks.